Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. Didn't I tell you last week it was going to be absolutely insane? Astrology never lies, and this is one of those times, I know I'm just diving right into talking about the astrological forecast, this time starting with last week before we talk about this week, but astrology never lies. And I know, I know, I know that sometimes it feels so difficult to feel like a difficult transit or a challenging transit is not something that we want to hear. We're all in the same boat. We're all under the same planet of these, like we're all under the same influence of these planets that are impacting us individually very different. And sometimes it can feel very exhausting. But before we even like go into this week, which will be a little bit more pleasant, but I'm going to talk, I'm going to break everything down for you so you know what to expect per usual. Always, you know, I'm never going to lie to you. I'm never going to sugarcoat anything. I'm always going to give it to you real rep raw. Um, yeah, I just want to say this real quick that sometimes it can feel frustrating, agitating, and just like, oh, Jess, I need to know only the positive. I only want to hear the fluff of, of things. I understand that, but I hope that for many of you guys, you understand that again, we're all in this together and it helps you to not be surprised by what you're seeing on the news, by what you're seeing in your day-to-day -day life. And astrology is something that allows us to understand why, why are these things happening? And going deeper than that, what is the lesson in this? How can I apply this to myself, my journey in a way that is constructive? It's wonderful sometimes to put our head in the sand and to wait it out and pretend like it's not happening, but there's no growth that happens in that place. For those of you guys that are exhausted or you're just like, when, like enough is enough, when is it going to switch? When are things going to get better? Ultimately right now, historically speaking, we're in a time of incredible transformation, evolution, and if you chose, I, I kind of believe that if you were born during this time frame, your soul chose to be here, which means that you contribute something to the collective. That can look like you're someone who is a fighter, an advocate, a truth teller, information sharer, and always coming through honest and transparent, authentic, that's me. And for some of you guys, you could be peace bringers, you could be healers, everyone's going to be different. The thing is, is that we need to know what it is that we're looking at so that we are not fighting with it, but we're helping to evolve and shape what is happening and, and shape it into something that mirrors our vision, like collectively your vision. So if you're a sensitive, if you're an empath, if you're a gifted, if you're a light worker, instead of being triggered and challenged by these transits, which is easy for that to happen, take a break, take a beat, take a pause. Remember that there are people here that are ready to help you and ready to reach out and ready to be consistent. Me personally, I've been on this platform for years, years, maybe 10, 10 years now or eight years, I can't remember, showing up every single week unless something is happening major in my life, but consistently showing up every single week and feeding information in a way that is honest and not sugarcoating, okay? What, what this does is it helps you so that you're not surprised, you're not taken off guard. You can start the week in that moment feeling like, wow, like everything's going to be fine and it will be, but then you turn on the news and your energy gets drained. Instead, I personally believe it's good to be informed, it's good to be empowered, it's good to know what to expect. And anytime when I talk about a, a transit, whether it be something that is challenging or something that is easy, I always give to you in conjunction with that, um, a way to make it work for your highest and greatest good and not work against you, okay? So that is very long-winded, but I just wanted to nurture the collective right now and speak life and put a blanket over the collective, especially those of you guys that are feeling exhausted before we dive into the full breakdown of the week ahead. Now, let me take a few steps back. I don't know if I introduced myself. I was pretty excited to come on here and talk to you guys. I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever, which is not true because <laughs> I, I went live or I came, came to our little platform here to come hang out and talk about the planets with you guys last week. We're right on time. It's Monday now. Haven't skipped a week yet. It just feels like it's been forever, but probably because so much has happened within the last week, 
Number one, how are you guys faring? What did last week look like for you? Me personally, I was very chill, um, very focused. I don't want to say in a bubble because I'm not really in a bubble. I've just been in my little zone, specifically working on custom fixed candles. I'm finally getting to the very last of that and the last of those orders and um, just quiet, just really quiet. I've been watching things kind of pop off in the news, major things and praying, setting intention, lighting candles for these events that I saw coming, right? Um, the reason why we see it coming is because, uh, go back to last week's video, you could see the conflict in the new moon. You could see the conflict within Mars squaring off with Neptune, Mercury squaring off with Uranus, the Sun opposing Saturn. There's all of those transits that, as I just mentioned, create a lot of tension in the skies and activate places within the astrology charts that are like a ticking time bomb so to speak so it's not pleasant to watch these things unfold it's not the end of these events happening especially with the new moon it kind of reopens that door and we start to see these things kind of popping off a little more down the line is it something to worry about it's something to be concerned about of course but this is something that is challenging us again to use our voices to contribute to the collective consciousness by giving peace giving love and I know we laugh about it all the time, but like your thoughts and your prayers, like that goes a long way. So, um, yeah, <laughs> again, I just kind of head dove head first into this, uh, this conversation that it is that we're going to be having this afternoon, but what you can expect from this video, transparency, authenticity, integrity, honesty, always. We are going to be pulling the charts. I have the chart pulled up on my right. I also will be shuffling with the cards with Tara. You guys have been loving this lately, myself included. We're gonna be breaking down what we can expect this week from start to finish. And then in the second portion of this video, we're gonna be shuffling the cards and seeing collectively, intuitively, what is what else do we need to hear, know, and what we're sensing. So go ahead, <laughs> grab some coffee, grab some tea, grab some apple juice, some water, whatever it is that you're sipping on, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, my loves, so hopefully you are all ready and cozy and comfortable and ready to dive into the astrological transits. I do wanna let you guys know, and many of you guys know this by now, but that I'm trying something new out with my setup. That way you can watch me while I'm shuffling. That way you can look at the astrology charts you guys love to follow along as I'm breaking the charts down, the astrological charts down. Most of you are very visual learners like myself. That's the way that I actually approach uh, education, especially when I'm teaching Sacred Circle Tarot School. Um, so I'm just gonna bring that, that energy, that same uh, method to our video today. Having said that, we are going to be shuffling later on in the video. I'll leave the timestamps down for you below, but for now, Let's go ahead and dive into the week ahead. So normally what I do is I take a few steps back before I break down what is that we can expect in this week. Because there was so much that popped off last week in the news and in, in events and in our day-to-day -day lives, I'm going to ask you to revisit last week's video and look at the, tr the transits and look at the tension that was being felt within the charts, right, of the astrology charts. How this ends up impacting us individually, like in our intimate lives, is going to be different for everyone. However, the tension still remains. Anytime when we have a new moon, that is usually less of a, like, I don't wanna say bomb, but that's less of a trigger than a full moon. But the thing is that is conflicting and kind of tough with new moons is that whatever begins under the energy of a new moon tends to set the tone and sense tends to set the trend for what we can expect six months and down the line right so full moons can be exp explosive but they tend to bring these like drop a bomb that changes our lives changes our direction changes our perspective and then from that place, it's, I don't say a fresh start, but you shift in such a great way that you can't really necessarily go back. New moons, although they're quiet and they're not so dramatic, 
they tend to open up the door, which is problematic because then we start to see whatever starts popping off around that new moon, we start to see a trend that tends to kind of set the tone for what is that we can expect. I say that to say that this energy that happened around the Virgo new moon is interesting because that tension will be continued, in my opinion, from how, I, how I've studied astrology and how I see how it impacts people in their lives, not just me, but my clients and family and friends, it tends to linger. And there's some people who may disagree with me. I understand that. Uh, there's different methods of teaching astrology and there's different beliefs. But from my perspective, I'm someone who is very, as spiritual as I am, I'm very analytical and science focused and logical thinking. I've noticed that a new moon tends to kind of usher in again these new trends and whatever the energy looks like at the time of the new moon that tension is something that we can expect so what does this mean for us <laughs> right like just starting this video and stay with me because i'm it's i'm sure this this week will be a little better we'll talk about it but um what does this mean this means that what we saw the energy that was popping off around the new moon is going to be a consistent situation that we will see repeating in different ways virgo is so interesting because it concentrates on like small detail and like uh like sensitive uh se sensitive people sensitive populations so this is interesting for me because i think anybody with i don't say like learning issues or learning disabilities but any type of like small nuance when it comes to how they process information if they're being bullied, if they're being targeted, if they don't have friends, if they're loners, these are situations that of course tend to like open up the door that we start to see these repeating patterns of them reacting to things and being very emotional. Um, and remember we did talk about that, especially now that Mars enter was entering the sign of Cancer at the time of the new moon, these are gonna be the themes that is that we're seeing. So just keep an eye out for that. For most of you guys that are here in the United States, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For everyone else, there's this um, there's this emphasis on emotion and being overlooked or not being heard, not being seen. That is creating a lot of conflict, and it's the small stuff that is adding up. That's making people lash out. That's making people need to push push for their rights or what they feel is their rights or to express themselves. And this can show a lot of tension. To put it mildly. This is going to be a theme that we're going to see all over the world. So I just want you guys to keep your eyes open for it. Now, when I say keep your eyes open for it, this does not mean that you burden yourself with trying to save the whole planet and trying to save the whole world. That's not possible. Um, it just means that when you see these things happening, that you understand and even push yourself a little like more into compassion, if you can do that where you understand, okay, this is the this is a person that has been overlooked. This is a person who has been out of sight, out of mind. There's a reason why. And it helps us to humanize and to understand to start so that we can begin to work on solutions. And it's good that we all have this perspective because it shows up in how we vote. It shows up in how we talk about people. It shows up in the narratives that we say and express in our communities and that goes a long way imagine being someone who is informed who is in compassion who is compassionate who is coming from a high vibration and you're sharing this information with your community you're the only one who is informed in this way you're the only one who's tapped into this way and the ripple effect that you can have so instead of feeling this like pressure to change it all and to save the world you start at home you start in your intimate world you start in your friendship circles right so that's something that i wanted to talk to you guys about as we're walking out of the energy of last week and the major lessons that is that it's sharing i also want to remind you that there's these major planets right now let me pull it up a little further um uranus retrograde right now neptune retrograde saturn retrograde chiron retrograde pluto retrograde the major planets, those major planets that I was talking about, the only thing that is the exception to all of this is Jupiter, and we'll talk about Jupiter in a minute. All of these planets are, are in either the very beginning stages of the sign that they're migrating into because the, the planets are moving and migrating, or they're in the final degrees 
of the sign that they're going to be moving out of, but they're retrograde right now. This means that something here is really being awakened in a major way across the board at this moment in time. These major planets, they rule our structure, our government. They rule illusion. They rule fantasy. They rule deception. They rule our intuition. They rule deeper healing. They rule deeper wounds. They also connect to instability and revolution. All of these planets, these major planets, are again in the very beginning stages of a new sign, which means that they're working on something new, like they're focusing on a new like a new a new space a new topic a new subject or they're in the final degrees which means that they're completing talking about that subject that major stage or that major um subject okay that we're all in, in impacting our lives what does this mean for you guys because some of you guys when i'm talking about it you're like jess it's too general my intention is to not be general with my predictions and with my astrology predictions the problem is is that I'm very, very specific, and it's impossible, literally it's impossible for me to break down to a detail exactly where this, where these energies are going to fall within your chart without actually looking at your chart. I can know your sun, your rising, your moon, like in general, but me doing an actual reading, I need to be able to see, yes, your rising sign, but like the actual degree. And to come on here and spend time with you guys under an hour kind of talking to you what is that you can expect, it's not possible for me to pull every single one of you guys' charts to give you a specific answer of exactly where and how this energy is going to impact you, not only in that area in your life, but how it's going to be impacting your personal transits, like your personal planets that, again, reveal to you exactly what is that you can expect. Astrology is so specific that if you're doing it right, there's no there's no like scratching your head you know exactly where this is going to be whether it be your health whether it be your relationships whether it be your money your psychology your upbringing your family these are things that a good astrologer will be able to pinpoint right into it and see exactly where this is going to be impacting and what you can expect in any varying extreme or mild like mild occasions, right? So for those of you guys that are like, it's it's too general for me, I understand, I totally get that, you know, when you hear about my, my reputation, when you hear about, you know, word of mouth, and then you come to the YouTube channel and you're expecting to know exactly zeroing in, why aren't you t saying exactly where this is happening within my life? And here's my rising sign, it goes deeper than that. Anybody else, I'm not, ta I'm not throwing shade, but anybody else will say, okay, this is happening when this, in this house for you or this is where you can expect this and it's true but it's still going to be general and that's just the bare bones that's the bare bones of it and I always like to be transparent of exactly what is that you can expect this is not me saying marketing to you like you know let me pull your chart because I'm seriously not on maternity leave but like halfway through maternity leave and I'm I have clients booked up anyway that I'm working through one at a time. It's just me being totally honest with you. I'm not trying to upsell or anything like that. So, okay, moving on to the next thing. Big, uh, taking a big deep breath of fresh air. What we can expect this week, and if you guys have any questions about last week, um, let me know down in the comments, of course. I'm more than happy to answer as many questions as I can. The major thing that is standing out to me is the fact that Mercury, the planet of communication, has just newly entered into the sign of Virgo and love 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 this energy not because i'm a virgo but because it's so specific it's so detailed how we communicate how we think how we process and i feel like it's awesome when it comes to problem solving and when it comes to us understanding other people's intentions their motives virgo is always overlooked when it comes to picking up on nuances of energy because when people think about Virgo, they think organization and perfection. And I think sometimes people think about like health and wholeness because Virgo rules that too. But I feel like it's more along the lines of how Virgo can be snippy and perfectionistic and organized. It's very general. But Virgo truly picks up on tiny nuances of energy and they're very psychically and sensitively, sensitively in tune. Is that a word? 
we can pick, and I say we because I'm a Virgo, we can pick up on like a small shift in the atmosphere. Like we can, and something, it just ain't right. Like we can just pick it up. If you think about Mercury entering at the sign of Virgo, Mercury will in communication and how we process information, how we analyze that information and then record it and tr like transcribe it over. This is going to be the collective right now where we're listening, we're hearing and we're sensing. There is this word that has been coming up all this year and the word has been discernment. Discernment because I think we're in a season right now where we need to be asking for not only protection, which we've been talking about, protecting yourself spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, but discernment on just what you choose and what is approaching you and being able to see something for what it is. Virgo will do that. This is one of those weeks and this is one of those times that if you work magic, if you set intention, if you are someone who sets a goal for yourself and you're not spiritual but you just set goals and you like to look at astrology and it helps you to plan for your week ahead because i have friends that do that this is one of those times where it's like you want to capitalize on the spirit of discernment whether you are researching it calling it in asking for a gifts the gift of discernment this is going to help you to decipher and decode what you're hearing how you anal analyze it and what you should be saying if you should be saying anything at all when mercury moves into the sign of virgo sometimes saying less is best sometimes listening is is going to tell you everything that is that you need to know instead of just talking like being long-winded and super descriptive what are you listening to like what are you hearing and what are they not saying this is where you're picking up on the information and the vibes of people which is giving you a lot more information than what someone is saying. This is something too that I think can be applied to politics and government and elections, definitely here in the United States, where you're, you're, you hear what someone is saying, but you're reading between the lines. You are asking questions and you're allowing people to finish their sentence so that you, and you're, and you're being aware of what is the right thing to ask or what you feel intuitively influenced to ask so that you can get the true right information, right? This is not a shy, even though people think that Virgo energy is shy, this is not a shy transit. It is involved. It's involved, it's inquisitive, it's quiet, and it's foretelling. Like it will tell you, it will show you what you can expect in the future. This is also not something that you take personally. Whatever it is that you hear, whatever it is that you're learning during this time, you don't, you don't make it ab about you. It has nothing to do with you. You start to see the, you start to see the intention and the root of where this is coming from. And more than half the time, it has nothing to do with you. For this reason, I think it's really interesting that Mercury is going to be squaring off with Uranus all of this week as well. Um, Uranus currently retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Uranus in this beautiful trine with Pluto, but just because it's a beautiful trine doesn't mean that it's easy. And we're seeing this happening within our day-to-day -day life right now and in current events, like global events. <clears throat> but this is information news, things that we hear that kind of shocks us. And it's there to put us in the right path of things that we can expect or exactly what is that we can expect instead of being like, oh, I'm safe here, I'm stable, my finances are secure, my resources are secure, I can count on this. You invest in it, you vote for it, you show up for it, you're vouching for it, and then when truth, when, the, when push comes to shove, a little further on down the line, you realize when the heat turns up in your life that that thing that was promised to be secure and stable for you falls down, it melts down, and you're you're left assed out. This is where the, the, the energy of discernment is so strong because you, in that moment when you're asking questions, you're not believing the hype, you're not believing the stories, you're not believing these fairy tales that people are promising you. You can ask hard hitting questions and and realize like this person is full of shit like they are more of a storyteller than a truth teller so 
Um, also, they wouldn't promise you just the positive things. They have a solution, they have a story, they have a plan in action, and the plan makes sense. Listen to your discernment, listen to like, listen to your intuition when it comes to this. Now, I keep mentioning politics, it's just because it's something that I'm interested in as I'm pulling the charts, and i am been doing my own private research and seeing like how I feel things are going to um, unfold in the future when it comes to politics and government. Um, but look at how this can break down in your relationships, whether that be intimate, romantic with your friendships or family or work. And <clears throat> when you're asking that person or people, more than one, what you can expect with deadlines, with the future, with your relationship, whatever, the whatever, fill the blank in, fill in the blank there. What are they saying and what does the vibe tell? What is their energy kind of reading? Virgo, again, don't ever overlook Virgo when it comes to their intuition and how quick they are to pick up on a nuance and how weird that is, right? Like how weird something could be or you just know intuitively to trust this person by not just what they're saying, but what, when, they, when, when they say what they say, how it feels. It will help you a lot. Now, for some of you guys, there is this element of separation believe it or not even though venus is transiting through the sign of libra the whole world will be telling you that everybody is romantic and wants to harmonize and compromise and come together and work things out and libra is the planet of love and relationships and beauty and transiting through the sign that she rules libra she's in her element right now don't forget that this sign is also notoriously very fickle and it goes what it's attracted to and that can change it also can be very, very flaky and it's not always authentic when it comes to communication it kind of is appeasing so again you may find that with these transits you're being taught and told how to kind of break away from relationships and friendships that are flaky and inconsiderate or taking advantage of you or just not promising for longevity for the long haul so don't look at that like don't look at this and take it personally and say well what did i do like how could i change this it's not something to change it's something to be aware of so that you can so that you can be prepared and plan for the truth instead of building you know a life or a moment or making plans on something that ultimately will kind of flake away and fall apart again don't take it personally mars currently transiting through cancer has a tendency to be emotionally reactive and to be like how could you do this to me like i thought you were my friend or just reactive from an emotional place easier said than done but try not to take it personally and try not to absorb that and take it all in okay I do want to tell you guys that um, the sun is squaring off with Jupiter this week. Sun is currently transiting through the sign of Virgo. Jupiter transiting through the sign of Gemini. Virgo and Gemini are brother-sister signs. Um, and what I see for this, for us this week, is not to indulge yourself, but to give yourself a little extra permission to rest up to ease up and i know that that is something that has been showing up a lot this year but it's our survival it's our survival mode it's our survival mechanism in a way that helps you to thrive not just survive but to thrive this means that we are engaging in things that kind of pull our our minds in different places so that we are not so consumed by the heaviness of the lesson in the moment right so it's good to be someone who is working on yourself. It's good to be someone who is honest. It's good to be someone who is, you know, doing the work and showing up. But it's exhausting. It's fucking exhausting. And I feel like we, can, I feel like we all can relate to that. And this is about, I don't want to say finding things to distract you, but finding things to fill up your time so it doesn't feel so heavy and work focused forever, or at least for the time being. This is the universe's way of giving you space and time to be dist not distracted, but to focus on other things. I don't know how else to say that. To focus on other things, whether it be a puzzle, whether it be video games, whether it be a new book, whether it be a new class, especially when it comes to holistic wellness, yoga, Pilates, walking, bar classes, whatever it is, a cooking class, very, very highly recommended. 
in the ast astrological charts, okay? Do you guys have any questions? I feel like we've pretty much covered everything. Hopefully, hopefully um, my microphone is picking up all that I've just said. If not, then <laughs> we're fucked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but let's go ahead and if there's no more further questions, let me know down in the comments, but let's go ahead and move on to shuffling from the tarot and seeing what we can pick up as far as intuitive channeling. So let me go ahead and take a quick sip of my drink and we will go ahead and dive into the tarot. All right, my loves. So we have the tarot deck or the tarot cam <laughs> up for you so you can follow along. Hopefully you're able to see it clearly while I shuffle and pull. The links to the tarot decks and the oracle cards that I'm shuffling and working with can be found down below. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So we're going to go ahead and set intention that everything that <clears throat> we see and hear right now be for our highest and greatest good only. That it be constructive and helpful to the collective and provide insight and clarity direction and a blessing to each of us individually along our path protect us from absorbing anything that is negative or not for us and give us the discernment to know exactly what is for us so that we can apply it where it belongs i also want to set the intention for discernment for everyone here today what is it that we need to hear for this week whoopsie um it's really interesting because i just dropped a card let me see this real quick <clears throat> um it's really interesting because i was as i was looking at the nine of pentacles one of the first cards to jump out um i saw this as like I don't really know a, a really nice way of saying this, but you know when you compare yourself, like you look at where you stand right now and you try to compare where you're standing in the moment to like what makes you successful and then you see how far it is that you have to go and you feel like you haven't accomplished anything. This, the first card, the first message that's coming through with the Nine of Pentacles is not, not assessing your success or not ex ass assessing your growth or a blessing by where it is that you currently stand, by where it is that you logically currently stand. I get this message that you're doing better than you think that you are. I also feel like someone here needs to give themselves a whole lot more grace and compassion that every day, it's like, it's like every day you're doing difficult things, you're doing hard things and you're handling it very well. This is like someone who handles like a lot of stuff and a lot of responsibilities and no one really gives them credit for it. And then, and yet they, they, they continue to do it. It's almost like people expect them to do it and they don't really reward them or thank them because they're so accustomed to it. There's this message with the Nine of Pentacles showing up reversed right now that intuitively I'm sensing that to give yourself way more credit because spirit can see how well you're managing it all and to really i don't want to like be a broken record but give yourself credit to acknowledge that this is going to be helpful when you're looking for the future looking towards the future because it's also going to help you to assess if this is something that you want to continue to do like the way that you're moving things right now especially the fact that we had the new moon that was in the sign of virgo last week just like it kind of like set things off in the collective, like in our news and current events, did it set something off in you when it comes to, okay, this is what I want to offer, which is interesting too, because you have the ace of pentacles here in the, in the future where you're saying, what is it that I want to offer when I assess and I look at everything that I'm doing or everything that I'm not doing, what more do I want to put on my plate? What do I want to take off of my plate? What is it that is going to actually nourish me? It's interesting too because the two of wands showing up here. It's, now it's really starting to make sense looking at these cards. Two of wands is where you look out and you try to assess, am I going this way? Am I going that way? Is this for me? Is that for me? 
Like it's, it's you looking into the future and making a plan as far as what you want and what is out there. When it's reversed and Nine of Pentacles is reversed, there's this energy that it is I'm seeing and sensing of you empowering yourself to, if not, if not to see the opportunity in front of you, like the opportunity to choose something, then to begin to call in choice, to begin to call in options for yourself instead of just succumbing to what is given to you. I hope that makes sense. This is like you saying, I know that this is what you expect of me. I know that this is what you want completed, but is I see a different way. Can we put this on the table? I think, no, like it's like declaring it. I think we should put this on the table. I think that we should do things this way because you guys are always expecting this of me. And it's not that I can't do it. It's just that I need to make more time for fill in the blank, whatever is important to you at this time. I'm going to give you a few metaphors that are coming through. For those of you guys that are in school, right? This is like if you're in a job, like school is your priority. Um, or, you know, yeah, school is your priority. You're working towards a degree, whatever that is, whether it be a college degree, whether it be an associate's degree, whether it be your diploma, and you have a job that you're carrying on all the summer, and the way that you would normally show up, taking on extra shifts, this is something that you now, your priorities have shifted. So could you be someone to constantly show up and, and take on other people's shifts and make things easier for everyone? Yes, because that's what people expect from you. They know that you're the, the first person to call and to answer. But your priorities have shifted. So now that you have kind of made a boundary and you've stated what's important to you and what others can expect from you now in this new season in your life, you're not someone who's feeling like you have to take it all on. If there's any type of turbulence or tumultuous energy that comes from that, then so be it. Because this is about this new season, this new goal, and what can be expected of you. Or what you're stating you will do now moving forward. Let's say this is a relationship. And in your past relationship, you you and your partner or whoever relied on each other heavily. So let's say this is a relationship where your partner relies on you heavily or you rely on them heavily or you guys are kind of like vines around a tree just woven around each other. This is where we start to explore a little bit more interdependence, meaning like you're separating yourself from what you normally lean into so that you can be more self-sufficient. Let me give you one last example and then we'll continue on with the reading. Think about like what you expect of yourself. It's like if you're comparing yourself to you six months ago, you've changed, you've evolved. There's probably so much that has shifted within you, especially the majority of us looking at these charts right now. So much has changed. So instead of saying, well, six months ago I was able to do it and you're beating yourself up because that's not something that you can expect of yourself now, it's giving yourself grace so that you can assess where you're at right now, put yourself at an advantage and set the bar of what is realistic and right for you in the season in your life. That's why I feel like the chariot card shows up and then the ace of pentacles shows up next because you've looked at realistically what you want, what you need, what you can expect, what you can do, as well as have that conversation with others. And then ace of pentacles shows up and gives the offering of this is what I can expect. This is what I can deliver. And now here it is the deliverable. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at these other cards that we have here. I'm going to push these side, push these off to the side. We have the sun card here, six of pentacles reversed, the emperor card, seven of swords, and then we have 10 of swords, ace of wands reversed. The sun card here always, well, typically represents like optimism and fun and laughter and joy. To me, this is the card of exposure. This is the card of awareness right now. This is where we are, instead of in, 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 ooh, incapacitated, incapacitated, instead of us, <laughs> not me trying to figure words out, instead of us being like imprisoned, <laughs> I'm just going to choose another word, right, by 
our realities and our expectations or whatever the case is, we look at it and we're just like, wow, because I know this is what I can expect, because this is what I know I want, I'm, li- I'm liberated by the truth. I'm liberated by this awareness. I'm liberated, I'm liberated and encouraged to speak up, to speak out, and to express myself. The Sun card definitely represents expression. If you think about it, it also rules Leo. Leo knows what it wants. It's connected to its heart, and then it sings it out loud for the world to hear or expresses it in a way that is creative and authentic and unique to you. So with the Six of Pentacles here and the Emperor card reverse and the Seven of Swords card, some of you guys may be needing to fall off the radar in some places that normally expect you to show up consistently. You are off you're off limits now you are in a different tier you are prioritizing different things you are figuring things out you may not necessarily have all the answers here you just know that there needed to be a shift and it's happening and you're figuring that out with the seven of swords i know a lot of you guys get scared when you see this because the tarot community will talk about like lying and cheating and scandal and Um, bringing things back from the past so that we can see it and apologize and make amends. Sure, (laughs) sure, that can be there. Um, I don't necessarily see that if that's something that is coming through to you. Also, keep in mind that the emperor is reversed. This means that if someone is coming back and apologizing to you or trying to get something from you or make a promise, the emperor is reversed. Anything that they are saying or bringing to your attention doesn't have the capacity to cement itself. It's not something that is mature or evolved. It could also be manipulative in the sense of like knowing that it's in control and knowing that knowing what you want and making a promise that it will do it and it will never deliver. It's just kind of more strategic in a way that is um, taking advantage of someone. So, and Six of Pentacles shows like okay, I know this is what you asked of me and I know this is what I promised, but then they never deliver on it. And this is where you say Ten of Swords. Okay, well, you burnt out. Ace of Wands here reversed. You burnt out again. Sever the tie, move forward. That's if we're talking about um, relationships and connections and what we can expect from others. When When we go deeper than this, I see this as some of you guys are really, you may not necessarily have the answer right now, but you're enlightened to know that there's something here that wants to be explored within you. And this could be a new path. This could be you having the goal, but you fixating on how do I get to that goal? How can I arrive at that destination? What is it going, what's going to be expected of me? How can I realistically make this happen? Um, for some of you, you may be feeling a drought. You may be feeling like a blessing or help or support or structure is missing in your life. And you're looking for it. You want it. You're calling out for it. And this is the way that the universe says it's like, put it out to the universe, speak it out, set intention for it, and stay happy and stay in a space of gratitude instead of lamenting and remorseful that what you want hasn't shown up for you in your life yet. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And what you're looking for also wants you. It's only a matter of time. There's just some karmic things that need to be tied up before it enters into your life fully. Okay? If you haven't set intention for the new moon in Virgo, this is a wonderful time to do that. Because even though the the Virgo new moon was last week, I still believe in listening to when you feel inspired to do something. To set intention when you feel inspired and the universe does respond to that okay let's go ahead and see what oracle deck do i want to work with right now i need to clean my oracle section my oracle tarot cards because they've gotten a little messy if you love these readings um even though they're short i offer bahati love notes which is pretty much like a bahati life patreon where I shuffle and pull for our small group throughout the month. And um, they're more intimate. They're about 20, 40 minute, 20 to 40 minute readings consistently. You guys know we go ham for this. You guys that are subscribed to Bahati Love Notes. Anybody that has subscribed, I'm getting so much feedback, but we've been consistent for a year and some change now. It's excellent for like journal prompts, for checking in with the energy. Today, this afternoon, 
they asked for money and security readings so I'm really excited to dive into that that's going to be next but um, yeah you can find the links for that as well as a coupon code listed down below all right so the Oracle cards that are jumping up Wow the first card is striving this is where we are trying to force things and stretch for things and try to reach things that don't necessarily want to be touched <laughs> if you're grasping if you're trying to grasp for it it's like whoop whoop like could have been faster could have gotten me there could have gotten me there gotta be quicker again it's like it's so exhausting sometimes to chase after things when they don't want to be caught so this is where we stop trying to chase after stuff it's one thing to set a goal and to set intention for something and to work towards it it's another thing to be in a space of desperation if you are there it will always evade you it will always escape your grasp or you will choose or settle into places that are not for your highest and greatest good in order to fill a void because you're not being patient with the universe and you're not trusting your intuition when it says the best thing to do right now is to wait. So please keep that in mind as you're moving through this week ahead that again, it's different. There's a difference between setting a goal and working towards that goal and letting the outcome be what it's going to be versus constantly chasing, pandering and begging, lowering your vibration, that's not good. Forgiveness, interesting that that's the next card to jump through. It says healing comes from acceptance help me dear lord to fully accept what is knowing that this alone will open me to the new so there is this new energy this new chapter that is i keep seeing definitely throughout the entire reading i love that it's showing up again in the oracle card is there anything or anyone that you can forgive are there aspects of yourself that you can forgive especially if you have lived and learned and are doing different I'm also thinking that this has a lot to do with the expectations that is that we set for ourselves. Remember we were talking about that earlier on in the intuitive reading where it's like, this is what I expect of myself. This is what I was doing six months ago. Why can't I do this now? Forgive yourself for not being that same person. Forgive yourself for not having the same energy. Forgive yourself for growing and having different needs now. Why? Because you've evolved. Forgive yourself because you know better now. Instead of holding, it, holding on to that and punishing yourself. And going back to a space of striving trying to get back to that which you once were that you outgrew the next card that we have here is courage i love this card so much divine courage is not the absence of fear but a nudge that says keep going do it don't worry all will be well you have to get quiet enough to hear it dear divine may i feel your courage and your will and i love that because that's speaking into us so that we can do what we need to do right now with boldness forever. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Bahati Love Notes, again, is there my offering to you. For those of you guys that love tarot, intuition, love readings, love to connect with the tarot, with me, with my messages, prophetic visions, those types of things, I, I talk about that or you'll find them mostly there especially the more controversial ones um mostly we tap into the collective there as far as what's going on in you guys' life but a lot of other things come up too it's just more relaxed and free-flowing there and way more consistent than just once a week okay so everyone else thank you guys so much for hanging out with me do subscribe to this youtube channel if you are someone who has been subscribed for a minute make sure that you're still subscribed if you can believe that because youtube has just been doing a lot <laughs> to everyone's youtube channel not just mine where they're unsubscribing people i don't know collectively like when i look at the astrology charts i understand it but it's also like like y'all need to get it together but i also give grace because it is what it is so just make sure that if you are subscribed that you're actually subscribed and turn on your the the bell so that you have notifications of when my videos go up i've been consistent for all these years it's not going to change anytime soon and i'll see you guys in my next one bye